Welcome back to Swiss Watch Expo. This is Taking Time. I'm Richard. I'm Jonathan. And today we got sort of an interesting topic. I'm sure you can see in the video, uh, in the picture, that there's some watches that you don't normally see. So stick around. We'll tell you why we got them. All right, welcome back. And uh, today we're talking about, we're gonna call it entry, entry level watches. In <laughs> our opinion. In our opinion. So there's a, this has been a controversial topic between me and Jonathan. We've been trying our hardest to figure out what entry level watches mean. Yeah, and, we, uh, we were uh, having a heated discussion yeah. for a little while. <laughs> yeah, if you, guys, uh, if, if you guys, if you recall, about two videos back, if they can put that on the screen maybe too, you can see that. About two videos back, we had an argumentative piece where he was talking about the Tudor and I was talking about the Omega and we were going back and forth to figure out who was best. Which which watch had the, which one was best? Um, in the back office, before we come out and do the videos, I can tell you that the arguments are much more heated. <laughs> They're not nearly as professional as they are in the video. But we we really go to town on these things. And again, we were saved by Miss Penny, who gave us sort of an idea. And so, if you're unfamiliar with Miss Penny, Miss Penny is the the unicorn of Swiss Watch Expo, and we're trying to get her out here. So, leave a penny in the comments if you want to get you want to get her here. And shout out to Mom, by the way. Mom was the very first penny we ever got. My mom. So, hi, mom. It's very special. <laughs> um, so, Jonathan, entry level watches. Why, why are we starting with this? How do we get to this? And what, you know, what are we considering the entry level piece at this point? Well, I think it's really kind of a few things. It's, well, it's not just the price point. Mm -hmm. You know, these are all very reasonably priced. Right. You know, you can get most of these for under $5,000, which right. Is a lot of money for a lot of people, me, myself included. Right. Um, it's more for what they offer. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's a little bit of the movements, a little bit of the aesthetics. It's, you know, the overall quality. It's just geared towards um, really individuals that are looking to get their first high quality piece right. that. You know, they don't know much about the whole Swiss watch industry. They don't right. know much about the brands. These are all just generic, you know, safe bets that, you know, anybody can take that doesn't know anything about watches that you can, for the most part, you know, dive in and have a good investment for the money. Right, right. It's going to last a long time. Yeah. And we went back and forth on whether or not we were going to do like entry level pieces per brand. So, again, Miss mm -hmm. Penny saved us and what she essentially suggested is for us to do you know, good entry brand pieces, uh, entry level watches, and so to speak, and then perhaps an additional video of going into the higher end pieces and getting into an entry level piece for like JLC, Vacheron, and stuff like that. So what mm -hmm. that'll look like, and we'll do that next. That's video. what I really want. To that's that, that's going to be fun for us. We, so we're gonna we're gonna do that next video. So stick around for the next video, and you'll you, you'll be able to check that out. Definitely. So, uh, so here's the ones we've chosen so far. We have uh, you know, we have a number of them. You some of them you don't typically see. Mm -hmm. Um, some of them you're pretty you're, you're probably very familiar with uh you know you've probably heard of omega you've probably heard of breitling maybe you haven't heard of bell and ross no <laughs> maybe, maybe you haven't heard of bomb mercier maybe you haven't heard of idfc so where do you want to start today uh let's just go this way so mm -hmm. let's start at the top so <clears throat> richard and i both used to work for an authorized dealer that did sell uh bell and ross yeah uh i like this richard picked it um i think it's really like a perfect kind of entry level piece. I agree. Um, it's solid quality, you know, never really had any issues with this brand. Um, they started out pretty unique in the watch world because they're more geared towards kind of giving that aesthetic right. of, you know, being a, in a cockpit. Right, the aviation, having, the aviation style. Yeah, a super legible dial. Mm -hmm. um, and again, you know, they're using a Salita type movement, which mm -hmm. is essentially, you know, besides Pretty much copying the ETA movement. Right. It's a solid movement. I mean, right. as long as you take care of it, you're not throwing it around. You know, that's going to last you a long time. And it's yeah. what, like three thousand dollars? Less than that, I think. <laughs> Actually, I think it's less than that. But yeah. So I mean, it's. It, I mean, well invested. It's a good solid. It's a good solid piece. And you know, like Jonathan's saying, like, it's it's a very legible dial. If you, I mean, you really stare at that. I mean, you can't not know yeah. the time with it. And I think the date is. Mm -hmm one of the best in the industry as far as how it's executed right you know it's just so kind of like off 
the beaten path that's right. not in your face like some watches are right yeah and you know I, I, as much as we love rolex the cyclops <laughs> lens sometimes gets in the, the way of viewing the time yeah so i do like the idea that it's you know if i want to see it i can still see it it's legible and I, yeah uh, but it's not you know like i said it's not very obtrusive and you know it's just a good solid you get a bracelet piece for i mean shoot ours is going for 2400 bucks or something it's like a that. solid bracelet yeah. i mean some some watch brands out there you know they give you a bracelet but it falls apart and you don't really have to worry the about next. the flex on this one do you yeah and like <laughs> two years you're you're uncomfortable you're not wearing the watch and sooner or later you're going to turn around and sell it this yeah. is comfortable it's sturdy it's solid yeah so yeah i agree and let's go to the breitling i guess um so this is a some might not consider Breitling to be an entry level watch or brand, so to speak, but this Super yeah. Ocean we definitely think is like this is this is where I think this is where Breitling kind of intends for you to walk into them, get to know them a little bit. Yeah, you, the definitely. Your watch, especially this being it's the I think this is the first generation of Super Ocean. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's got the white uh, date wheel. So <clears throat> this is a first generation Super Ocean. It's not the newer Super Ocean Heritage Two. It mm -hmm. uses uh, you know a third party movement, a Salita based movement that Breitling would just decorate. Right. I mean, it's a very generic, straightforward time and date watch. Again, you know, but it's two hundred meters of water resistance. It mm -hmm. looks pretty. You know, you can take this you know out on a date. You've got a uh, you know a dive bezel here that doesn't have all the numbers and everything. So it's very straightforward. Yeah, are, we are we taking this one on a date so we can time the escape or something? I don't know. Are we go <laughs> going on a double date or something? <laughs> I, don't, I like I like the mesh bracelet you give with this one as well. So I mean, yeah, you know, it's different. It is different. You don't see, you know, it, what you're usually seeing is these like three link construction. You oyster know, you, style. Oyster style uh, bracelets. And with this, you get something completely unique, something that is very visible to the naked eye. People can see that this is something that's a little out uh, of the ordinary. So you, you're still coming in with a very, very modest <clears throat> entry level watch, but something that is still going to let you just kind of set yourself apart from everyone yeah, else. Yeah, it's less than four thousand dollars. Yeah, I mean you can't beat that either. I mean the price point's good. Yeah. All right, now we've got uh, we're we're going to go to the Omega, the Omega. I think we'd be remiss if we didn't talk about Omega a little bit. Yeah. But and this is where we had our biggest the, debate. Man, boy, did we fight. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, yeah, we came to the conclusion that the Aquaterra is, especially the older generation, uh, it's just one of those watches that nobody really talks about. It is true. Yeah, it's true. I mean, you, you, know. you get a lot of phone calls for the Seamaster. You hear the Speedmaster mm -hmm. all the time. But, yeah. I mean, in, in going with the styling of this, this is, it's, a, it's a nice dress watch. It's, again, it's very re readable. It's an you, everyday it's watch. It's an everyday wear watch. Yeah. You know, and um, you see the Aquaterra... Uh, you know, it, like I said, it's not quite as popular, but it is still, it's it's still an entry level piece. I mean, mm -hmm. we're looking at this, you know, being under four thousand dollars for us for our price point here, and uh, you know, you get Omega, and you know, the thing me and Jonathan were kind of going about was whether or not this um, the Omega would be better suited for like the entry level watch for the sheerly because of the price point, or whether or not it was it, like this is more of an intermediate brand, and we kind of see it in in that intermediate brand realm. Yeah, but. Right. Any of these brands too can yeah, any offer of those, kind of, yeah. you know, types of listings. It's just Absolutely. like the overall brand of Omega. I felt like is more of a higher kind of tier type watch. Um, uh, yeah, but we did agree that if we're going to kind of go with the entry level for Omega, the Aquaterra is the right fit. Yeah, I mean, you get a lot for your money. You get you the do. coaxial movement. You know mm -hmm. the. Dr. Daniels invented the the escapement, which is one of the best on the market. And the finishing, especially for the coaxial pieces, is you know got it's a very phenomenal. unique, very unique uh, type finishing. And you get an ex exhibition case back with this. You get Omega quality. You know it's uh, one of the best out there. Yeah, you I know agree. for especially you know this entry level price point right you know the bracelet again solid sturdy construction it's comfortable i used to wear something similar i used to wear a railmaster um so i, I mean i remember yeah, that one yeah i love that one blue dial yeah i love that watch <laughs> <laughs> so let's go to I, I don't know i kind of feel like ending on iwc so let's talk about the bomb mercier okay um everything about this watch screams value everything about it yeah, yeah but I think we need to expose why, because Bon Marche is not really. You're right. Like they were, they were. Well, they they are like known once you get into watches, but right. this is not known. This is not known. And you know, if you if I was to tell you what you get out of this watch, it's an in-house five-day power reserve movement for under five thousand dollars. In this case, we're looking at like and $3, it's a chronometer. Bucks. So yeah, it's the dial has the cross on it that signifies mm -hmm. that it's a chronometer. Right. 
And it's five days power reserve. To get this same stuff in another watch. You're gonna have to spend at least eight to ten thousand dollars minimal. Right. Yeah, it's it's just a phenomenal buy. But I mean, in you know, even for ours, I think this is I don't know if it's an unworn condition or if it's mint, but it's in this case it's about as good as you can possibly ask for it. And it looks like it just came off the factory floor. Yeah, and, and it's thin and too. It's thin, and it does, you know, it wears, it, it's not as chunky on the wrist. It does yeah. wear nice and low, and it's a good millimeter size. What, is, you remember this one? You remember the millimeter size of this one? You have not? You, are you talking about? The, yeah, the millimeter, uh, the case. I think it's 38. 38, okay. Yeah, if you guys know, 41. If so. you guys know, let us know. If you guys know for sure, but let us know in the comments, but yeah. I think you're probably right. This just came out like a couple of years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Two, three years ago. Yeah. Yeah, so it's a relatively new watch. Yeah, I think we were still working. We were at the authorized dealer when that uh, yeah. when they when they brought that out. So just a phenomenal bang for the buck. And also, you get you also get your exhibition case back. So I don't know if you guys can see that, but yeah, that's pretty slick. So and again, a very nice strap. Yeah, the gorgeous thing. And now IWC, you lead the way. So I think IWC fits into this category with the Pilots watch, not the Pilots chronograph, but the Pilot the Mark sixteen and above. Right. Um, you know, it's just a Again, it's a straightforward watch, highly legible dial. Mm -hmm. um, before, like up until I think it was last year, you know, they were using Salita based movements. Mm -hmm. um, so you're getting another, you know, again, the workhorse of the Swiss watch industry. Right. It's literally like carrying the entire team on its back, mm -hmm. IWC included. Um, you know, screw, <laughs> screw down crown. 100 water? 100 meter water six, resistance? It's an odd, weird 60. It's oh, not 50, okay. it's not 100, it's 60. All right, but, don't go scuba diving with it. Maybe, yeah. maybe a pool. You know, it's a satin finished case. You don't get mm -hmm. a you don't get a see-through case back on this or an exhibition right. case back. But I mean, it's just I mean, it screams entry level to me. Yeah. So like you said, it's kind of it's it's a very it's a very basic piece. It's yeah. like it's got it's got all the things you need for a watch. Um, it keeps excellent time, and it comes from a very prestigious band. I mean, not a lot of people talk about IWC as being. Right. I mean, you may you may look at IWC and not even know you could get into IWC for the price point. Yeah. Um, because you know, you may be looking at. You go into their page and they're popping up, you know, international watch company, and it's right. got a big pilot perpetual calendar. Right. Case. <laughs> and it's tons like, of money. <laughs> yeah. All pressure. Thirty two thousand. <laughs> yeah, thirty two thousand dollar watch. It's just like oh, like, okay, and they well, have something that. that's like. Five thousand dollars. Yeah, and it's a great, so. it's a good entry level piece. And again, I really like anything that's on uh, a NATO strap or a stitch strap. I just really think that's a cool, a, a, a cool situation. Yeah, it gives out a tool kind of watch. It does. it does. I mean, I can just imagine a, a pilot wearing this before they get in the cockpit of a plane. So it's, it's just a neat. It's a, it's a really neat buy for again for an entry level piece. Yeah. So of course we got to do the same thing we always do. What's your favorite? I don't know. I'm really torn this time. Like. It's kind of like, I think I'm going to have to go with the IWC. Okay. Because it's just, I don't know. And it's got that Fotina too. To I it. do like the Fotina. Um, I do. I don't know. It's just something about it. It's 39 millimeters, 40 millimeters. And it's uh -huh. thin. It's kind of just got that satin finish. I'm not one for polished surfaces. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I scratch it. I bang my. That's why I love up. the real master so much. But anyway, that's a different yeah. video. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I mean, I, I like that a lot more, and it's got a matching green needle. It does. It just look, looks just like the tutor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go with. I mean, I, I'm I'm kind of torn because if you guys have seen the Starbucks video with, when we, where we were talking about the green dial, I mean the green bezel, green dial uh, Rolexes, um, you know that I'm all for a really strong power reserve. So that really puts me towards the the ball the ballmatic, and I love the value that's that you get surprising. out of it. That's surprising. But honestly, I don't know what it is. I really like the Bell and Ross. I love the. I, I just love the. Again, we're talking about Fotina in this one. Yeah. Um, obviously, it's it's meant to be have that brownish hue to it. Yeah. And it's just a very readable watch. Uh, looking at it from a distance, everything's very visible. I mean, the bracelet you can see it really well, and I actually kind of like the bigger dial with the smaller bezel. I like the dynamics of that. It that, makes that it kind of feel bigger. It does. It versus, uh, you know, I think what was it? You can get, you can look at a 36 millimeter Rolex versus a 36 millimeter Omega and the Omega looks smaller because the bezel is bigger and the dial is smaller. Mm -hmm. So in this case, the same thing you're talking about, it does make it feel bigger. Mm -hmm. And I got a large, I got big old hunking hands. So <laughs> this one fits a little bit better on the wrist. So that's, that's my choice. What's your choice? Let us know what it is. Comment. Um, Comment, like, subscribe, 
hit the bell. Is that what they say? Hit the yeah. bell. Is that the thing? Give us a call. Yeah, give us a call. Swiss Watch Expo. Again, uh, make sure you put Penny in the comments because we do want to get her out here one day. And maybe we'll do entry-level pieces for ladies and Penny will be our, our lead source. I don't know. Yeah. Let us know. Tell her in the comments. That way she'll see it. And uh, we'll catch you next time on Taking Time.